The Twelve Patitudes, a son's eulogy for his dearest mother. I would like to welcome everyone to this celebration of Patricia Ann Jensen Palafkak's earthly sojourn, which concluded with her angelic union to our heavenly family on June 30th, 2022. My name is Stephen George Palavkak, and I am her last born child. When I was born, my father said to my mother, Pat, when we get older, Stephen will be our crutch. Well, they both were right. I was privileged to spend countless hours and endless days with both my parents before they went home. I would first like to say, I am honored to have this responsibility to take this moment to tell you about my mom. Patricia, affectionately called Tish by her father, was the firstborn child of George and Louise Jensen, born on April 1st, 1938. Mom was born three months premature and only weighed three pounds. Dr. Charles C. Chappell, whose invention of an incubator that revolutionized the care of premature infants led to mom's healthy homecoming in three months. She was one of the first babies to be incubated at Hahnemann Hospital. Being a preemie, mom was precious to her family, determined to succeed, strong until her last day, an inspiration to her progeny, a miracle to science, a fighter in life who had hope for the future and had the courage of her convictions. Being born on April Fool's Day, Mom was a good-natured merrymaker with a great sense of humor. She would always say, laughter is the best medicine. Every Christmas time at work, she would hire a group called Clowns Are Us, who brought smiles and joy to all of our residents. Mom was named after her Aunt Pat, who she immensely adored. Her grandmother was very overprotective of her as a child, and remained in our daily conversations until her most recent days. She truly loved her. Over the past few years, Mom and I worked on a keepsake of her personal memoirs. I think the best way to remember Mom is by using her own words. Mom had a very happy childhood. It was filled with a large family and many friends. As a child, Mom was very playful grateful and well-behaved. She loved spending time listening to radio shows like Lux Radio Theater, The Shadow, and The Lone Ranger and Tonto. She also liked going to festivals at churches, cutting fresh flowers and placing them in her wagon, combing the hair and changing the clothes on her dolls. Her happiest memory from her childhood was when she received the Holy Communion. She loved her white dress, veil and socks, along with her Mary Jane's prayer book, rosaries, and being there with her grandmother Murphy. She also enjoyed when her father, George Wood Jensen, taught her a short poem he wrote. When all the world deserts you and throws you out in the cold, remember the kick the football gets before it reaches its goal. As a teenager, Mom was carefree and enjoyed the freedom to explore. On her 16th birthday, she received a red portable radio and in her own words was the nicest of them all. She immediately snapped it on her bicycle, which she often rode to Cresham Creek, located in Wissahickon Valley Park. She also liked to help her mother around the house, peeling potatoes and getting ready for dinner. She used to babysit for Mrs. Regal, who owned a babysitting service to which she made 50 cents an hour. She had fun spending her earnings at Woolworths or SS Kresge's 5 and 10, buying her favorite candy like Jujubees, Tootsie Pops, and Jelly Beans. She graduated from Little Flower High School in June of 1956. Her happiest memory as a teenager was when she met her future husband, Jimmy my father. He introduced her to motorcycle riding, country music, and social clubs. 
She loved taking trips with him to the Jersey Shore and up into Bucks County, where they later purchased their country home. Jimmy looked out for her and protected her. Everyone who was close to Mom loved to make sure that she was safe and she was sound. After high school, Mom worked full-time at Harleysville Insurance Company. She enjoyed her clerical responsibilities, but her dream was to get married and have children. She was married on April 23, 1957 at St. Athanasius Church to James Michael Palomkak. They eventually had six children, 16 grandchildren, and 14 great-grandchildren. That, my friends, is what you call leaving a legacy. As a mother, her proudest moments were watching her children accept responsibility, grow to be adults, and create families of their own. After living her dreams of getting married and having children, Mom set out for a second dream, to be a healthcare professional. She always had a fascination with psychology, anatomy, physiology, and sociology. Mom explored different healthcare positions and after searching for a few years, became an activities director at Briarleaf Nursing Home, a position she held for 35 years. In that time, she initiated many programs that brought the community and the residents together. The most memorable one for me was the Adopt a Grandparent program. At the age of seven, I adopted my first grandparent and a lifelong value was imprinted on me. Mom stressed the importance of providing the sick, elderly, and infirmed with a sense of purpose, respect, and self-worth by spending quality time with them. Most importantly, listening to their stories, which to this day I take pride in doing. She loved being in a management position at work. She enjoyed her job so much because every day was different. There are too many milestones of her career to mention, but I would like to share a couple of highlights. The first was when Peter Kosmeyer, a Pennsylvania congressman, came with his entourage. He had just won the election and donated a flag to the residents. He was grateful for all the votes he received from them. Another highlight was when Cardinal Bevilacqua came to visit. He made an impression on Mom because he visited every single resident at Briarleaf. During her years as a director, she had a wonderful relationship with her administrator and best friend, Diane McGurr. Their work together transformed Briarleaf from a healthcare institution into a home where the residents felt like family. In her memoir, she wrote that Diane was her mentor. She helped mom evaluate her current and past situations, leading her to find a better way of life. Diane gave mom the guidance she needed to love who she was and to follow her heart. Mom happily retired in 2017. After retirement, Mom spent her days at home with Diane and her faithful service dog, Bo. I was with her every day for lunchtime and afternoon activities. We started many new hobbies together. Mom was inquisitive and loved studying new topics. My sister, Nicole, started an ancestry account several years ago. She was so empowered to know where her ancestors came from. When the first Jensen named Karsten and his wife Katarina and their children immigrated from Schleswig-Holstein, she was fascinated. Further investigation found relations with notable Americans like poet Robert Lee Frost, First Lady Mamie Geneva Dowd Eisenhower, 14th President of the United States Franklin Pierce, and the 38th President of the United States Gerald Rudolph Ford. Researching Ancestry also led us close to home where we found out that her great-great-grandmother, Frances Murray Rahill, is buried right here at St. Mary's Cemetery behind this very church. 
At 84 years and a woman with many experiences, a short eulogy is not enough to tell the full story. So I will close with some words of advice that she has written in her memoir. I call them the 12 Patitudes. Number one, never lie and always tell the truth no matter what. Number two, don't talk ill of the deceased. Number three, don't give away the store. Number four, save enough for yourself. Number five, take time to live in comfort. Number six, don't spend money frivolously. Number seven, enjoy yourself along the road. Number eight, Making other people happy makes you happy. Number nine, follow the Christian way. Number 10, learn the distinction between the givers and the takers in this world and know the difference. Number 11, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Number 12, don't burn bridges. May the gentle and wise spirit of my mom, Patricia Ann Jensen, be with us 